Will you please put your hands together for Connor McGinn? Hey everybody. Wow. <laughs> Waylands, it's a, it's a cool spot. Um, I think it's too cool for most scientists, actually. Uh, <laughs> Like, like many scientists, uh, growing up as a, as a kid, I, I, I really wanted to be a rock star, so um, be, being in Whelan's is, is, is particularly good. I, I know this is a comedy gig and, and not, a, not a rock gig, as I'd hoped. Um, <laughs> I'll be honest, and this is a little bit embarrassing, when, when, when I first got the email, uh, I, I said yes without reading it in, in completion. I just saw the Whelan's and the, the, the one of you is spot on stage, and I was like, well, finally, this, this day job that I'm doing at Trinity is something I can, you know, the show business calling me. Um, I, I think I, I thought about it, and I thought, you know, although I'm not, I, I don't particularly want to be here. Um, <laughs> Uh, I don't think this is a good idea, it's not going to help my career. Uh, and if people see this, you know, it's going to come back to haunt me, much like any time I've ever been to Coppers. Uh, I, I thought I'd, I'd give it a shot. And maybe, maybe some people in the room can help me. Um, I'm, I'm sure people here are, are into social media and, you know, tweet things or, 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 or post things. Um, and I think maybe if you could, and you're doing it tonight, and you're going to mention me, maybe just don't mention the comedy bit, just the Whelan's bit. So, I don't want to put words in your mouths, but, you know, something like, you know, Connor really rocks at Whelan's. I think that'd be, that'd be, that'd be good, or, 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 you know, Whelan's should definitely have Connor back for, for a bigger gig or a longer gig. You know, this is, this will, it's a small step, but, you know, hopefully tonight I'll, I'll make it. Uh, while, while talking about social media, um, I think uh, it's something I'm, I'm starting to come around to more. Uh, I didn't originally get into it in the beginning, um, but I've now learned that you know Twitter and Instagram is, is, is pretty cool. It's the only place where it's socially acceptable to make your own nickname. Uh, so we were science man, is that right? <laughs> <laughs> Well, I, I'm the bot mechanic, formerly, formerly the Boy Ninja 88, but you're not, you're not, you're not going to get on that anymore. Uh, tonight is, is my first night doing, doing comedy, uh, doing stand-up, and um, I'll be honest, you made it a bit easier, because you asked to kind of talk about the work, because that's usually, as much as I didn't want it to be, usually people laugh at that, uh, so it's, it's, I'm slowly getting there. Um, but yeah, I, I think it's interesting, being a roboticist, I, I'm an assistant professor in the School of Engineering in Trinity, uh, I'm very interested in, in, in robotics and artificial intelligence. I'm, I'm fascinated by you know, me mechanical systems and how complicated behavior is possible um, you know, through, through, through intelligent design uh, and control. And, and this is a strange career, I know this, uh, I get told this. Uh, but you know, credit to my, my folks, my family, they actually you know, saw this coming a long time ago. You know, if you ask my, my parents what I was like when I was a kid, they'll tell you. You know, I was a smug, you know, argumentative little bollocks. So, you know, they, they knew I'd be a professor. The, the engineering, the robotics bit, that came, that, that was something that they didn't see coming. Uh, and I think in hindsight, I, I, I've thought back to, to my youth, and there's actually a lot of signs uh, that I, 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 this path is for me, the technology was for me. I thought tonight it might be, might be interesting to share one with you. Uh, so if you allow me, I'll, I'll kind of set the scene. Uh, I was around 10 or 11. Um, my, my, my parents were having a, a party, it was a New Year's party. Um, we, we decided to, to invite the family. We're, we're like many Irish families. Maybe once, certainly no more than once a year, we all get together and that's, it goes without saying, it, it's a bad idea. It, it starts well, ends poorly. Uh, and you think we learned, but you know, this year we, we were gonna have it. And what made things particularly bad this year was that an uncle of mine, uh, we'll call him Eamon, um, he was going to be there, and the previous number of years he was in England, so he wasn't really something we had to concern ourselves with. And with, with Eamon, he, he, he's an interesting guy, and when I mean interesting, he makes people very uneasy. That's the, that's the take on point here. Like, he's the kind of person, if he wasn't a relation, there's no way we'd be inviting him to anything. He's, 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 he's not, he's, a, he's an interesting person. And another point about Eamon that's kind of worth mentioning is that he's a, a wheelchair user. Now, I didn't bring that up because uh, I have a problem with people wheelchair. It wouldn't be something I'd, I'd mention that people with a wheelchair user had a conversation, but it, it comes in, in usefulness in, in, this, in this story. Uh, okay, so I'll set the scene. Uh, again, you know, young, uh, you have this, having this Christmas party or the New Year's party, and you know, the family are a bit nervous. 
And the, th this kind of, the, it started bad from the get-go. Uh, you see, my, my uncle wasn't able to get a taxi to our house. We lived in Hoth, which is a hill. He wasn't able to get a taxi that could take his wheelchair because of the day he was in it. They were, you know, there wasn't a lot of people working. Uh, so we had to get the dart, which meant that in the middle of winter, he had to, to kind of wheel this thing up a hill, um, which I can only imagine he wasn't happy about. And halfway up the hill, the, the bloody thing bre breaks. So, you know, when he arrives at the house, you know, People knew from, from an early stage he, he wasn't going to have a good night and it was going to be a downhill slope. And you know, as the night went on, you know, my, my, my first memory actually of this, you know, I, was, I was still quite young as I mentioned, was actually at 9 o'clock kind of being wheeled to my room. And it wasn't because I did anything wrong, it was just to kind of shield my innocence, protect my innocence. Because I just, you know, all the aunties crying and the men screaming was just something that they kind of figured I, I, I was best uh, withheld from. And you know, of course, that age, you don't go to bed, it was New Year's, I was. I was a bit pissed off that I was, I was being sent away, um, so I could hear everything what was going on. And after a while, uh, my uncle Eamon, he, he kind of, as, as drunk people do, he passed out. And the, my uncles dragged him away to the spare room, which was next door to where I was. Uh, and the party resumed uh, as, as it should have. Uh, and at this stage, I had an idea. And at the time, it seemed like a really good idea. Uh, I felt that, you know, this guy's wheelchair is broken. Maybe I can fix this. And if I do that, he'll be in a good mood. And it means maybe I can join the party and the, the, the grown-ups will see me as kind of one of their own. Um, so I decide this is, this is good. I go next door, quietly. I take the wheelchair back. Uh, I go downstairs, uh, into the garage, in fact, where we have some tools. I get the tools and I come back up. Uh, and at this point, I should probably tell you guys, I have no fucking idea how to fix a wheelchair. <laughs> you know, I was 10. So, so this, is, this is very similar to, to something that we, we do a lot in, in, my, in my line of work. It's called reverse engineering. It's when we kind of see something, we don't fully understand how it works, but we see value in, in, in deeper understanding uh, so we can recreate it. Uh, an example in robotics might be if we want to, to say design a robot that can pick something up, what we could do is make some very complicated mechanism that you know, no one's ever seen before, or we can try and understand something like a human arm and a human hand and be able to try and fundamentally understand that and represent that um, in, a, in, in a technology. Uh, so, you know, at this stage, I decided I'm going to try kind of, you know, step one is reverse engineering this. So I open the, the I, I take the thing apart, um, and I, I, there's two points uh, that I kind of realized when, you know, I've got 60 pieces in front of me. The first is that there's no fucking fixing this, no matter how good you are. <laughs> the bearing is gone, you know, unless I've got, a, you know, a, a factory to, to make this, you know, it's not getting fixed. And the second is I, I start to really understand the principle of entropy. And... <laughs> What that means, in short, is that things are much, much easier to take apart than reassemble. <laughs> and what, what would have been smart would be to kind of get up and go downstairs and tell my parents that, you know, I screwed up, you know, this is what happened and hopefully fix it. But I was tired and, you know, I didn't want to get in trouble, so what I did was I wrapped up the, the, the wheelchair in, the, you know, in my duvet and I, I brought it next door back to where my uncle was and, you know, I just left it there and went back to bed. <laughs> so. I get woken up um, by what I think are the gates of hell opening up. Uh, not long later, what, what happened was my uncle turns on the light, sees his wheelchair, you know, flown all over the over the floor. Uh, of course, he's very drunk at this stage. So what he thinks is that my aunties and uncles, whom he's pissed off earlier on in the night, they thought that they they hatched some kind of a revenge plot on him. So he's it's actually a good thing that he needed a wheelchair because I can only imagine the damage the man would have caused if he was able to do much. So when my parents uh, and my aunties and uncles get there, uh, you know, they, they they see this isn't. They actually have no idea what's going on. They start looking at each other uh, because they've no idea how this guy's wheelchair has been. This is this is genuinely perplexing everyone all the time. And this is making my uncle more angry. Um, I come in and, and I, st I, you know, after a while I kind of pluck up the courage to tell them that it was me. But of course, the, the irony being that nobody's going to think an 11 year old or 10 year old is possibly capable of doing such a thing. So this became, a, you know, a farce of epic proportions. And I guess I'll finish on this. Like, the, 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 the funny thing is, because I, I told my parents this story not long ago, I said that, you know, actually, you know, this, this is a clear sign that I'm supposed to be an engineer. And the very fact that I wasn't able to put it back together again, and that I screwed it up so badly, they felt that it was justifying their original point that engineering wasn't my career path, so... <laughs> <laughs> Whatever that, be, that being is it may, uh, thank you guys, and I'll pass it back.